repeat I'm the king of the Roomba beat When I play the maracas I go Well, that is a fun way to get into this last segment going to talk a little Cuba. Grant Cohen is the co-founder of Chaco Travel. He joins us on the phone from Denver, an expert on Cuba travel. And I'm so interested to talk to you, Grant. First, thanks for joining me here on this Tuesday afternoon. Thank you for having me, Jason. All right. So I'm interested in this because a couple years ago, right as things were opening up a little bit, my family and I went to Havana. We explored around. We stayed uh, there in the old city. It's such a fascinating place. And yet now we're at a moment where we're reversing course as the United States and the opportunities are, are limited. Help us understand how limited they are, where where we are in this process. Okay. Yeah, that's a good question. There's a there seems to be a lot of confusion uh, among the public about that. Um, so the, the U.S. government has whittled down what they call the people-to-people category uh, over the past couple of years. Uh, starting in June 2017, they eliminated the individual people-to-people category, which are essentially meant that you could travel to Cuba individually, but you had to follow certain regulations, uh, mostly pertaining to uh, engaging with the local people. Uh, and then in June 2019, they eliminated the group, uh, the group people to people travel category, which was still allowing people to do those same trips, but with a company such as Chaco Travel. And the idea would be that the company was responsible for overseeing the activity of the travelers and ensuring that they conform to U.S. regulations. What we've seen now is the elimination of both of those categories. Mm. Uh, there does remain one category called support for the Cuban people, and uh, you can travel to Cuba uh, on, on that license, as they would call it. Um, and that's what we operate under. Um, so we've, we have been unaffected by these changes, as have some companies. Uh, and those companies are, are pretty much all operating under this support for the Cuban people license. And so how much, what's your sense of how much that is ultimately limiting it? Because candidly, I mean, we went under the individual plan. We bought tickets on Delta Airlines. We flew direct from JFK into Havana, you know, bought the the visa when we got to the airport. It was pretty simple. We got an Airbnb and we took a few tours and I, it was pretty fascinating, I have to say. So all that's gone. How much is that going to make an economic dent? Uh, it, well, it'll make an economic dent on, on, on our side um, in the sense that mostly with the cruise industry, they were abruptly, uh, the U.S. government abruptly ended cruises right. instantly. So, you know, at least 800,000 people, they say, were affected by that. That'll be the biggest impact on the on the U.S. travel industry. Um, on the Cuba side, of course, they're going to be affected greatly um, just due to uh, the the reduction of tourism there and the reduction of people spending money at restaurants, on guides, um, uh, and, and on other services that they provide there. It does not have a dramatic effect, say, on, on our operation because we have – we have always conformed to the regulations of support for the Cuban right. people, which essentially means what you described. You, you stay at a private house. You work with local people. Um, lo- so, for example, our trips, we stay at, lo- we stay at private homes. We yeah. work with local musicians and artists. We do home-cooked meals with families. But we limit our engagement with the state as much as possible. Uh, any company that operates that way can continue to operate. And any American that wants to go to Cuba is, is free to call me up or to call any other company that's operating that way and to plan a trip. And help folks uh, out there understand what they can expect to see, because I have to say it was not uh, what I expected uh, necessarily. What, what do people tell you once they go? Uh, yeah, that's a great point. Uh, so it's rarely expectations about Cuba. A lot of people call me and their, their first impression is, you know, maybe it's something like the Bahamas or Jamaica. They've been other places in the Caribbean. And Cuba is an extremely unique country to travel to, um, as I'm sure you witnessed. Yeah. Uh, and so, so what I always say, it, it, going to Cuba is it's a good place to go with a company um, because they're really going to – eliminate a lot of the headaches that you encounter, 
the dual currency that's there that pe it's very difficult to understand. Um, uh, just a, a lot of the complexities of, of traveling to Cuba, um, you know, companies such as ours will take care of for you. Um, but when people come home, they've usually kind of acclimated to the the, the complexities of Cuba. Yeah. And by that point, they're having a great time, and they're all thrilled they went. Um, but there definitely is that that uh, the day of arrival. We always say there's kind of a deer in headlights look a little totally. bit. Totally. So. Yeah. No, I to we totally had that that exact experience where we weren't completely sure about, you know, the money and the ability to get money, which you cannot, you know, out of a out of an ATM. You can't really use a credit card. So you really have to have to have cash. And I think we also didn't fully anticipate that much of it feels very much like a almost war torn country in in some ways just the dilapidation you know in within blocks of you know incredibly beautiful well kept buildings there there's a lot of cognitive dissonance in in some ways it feels like yeah no question um and that's that's the focus of a lot of what we do is is engaging with uh, some uh, an, uh, there's an a well known architect there who was Working in you know pre 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 revolutionary times and 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 now is taking people around the city and and discussing those kinds of things. Yeah, and, you know where where the city what the city looked like before the revolution, what it looks like now. Um, there's no question that that's an issue there, and I think that's why it's important that Americans are aware of this support for the Cuban people category. I think no, that I agree with you. Really, if you are adhering to those regulations you're going to be providing direct support to the people who need it the most. And so, you know, as you, as you saw, the, the buildings are falling down. Imagine what it's like on the inside. The refrigerator's broken. Right. It takes you a couple years to get enough money to, to, to pay for a new one. So, so all of the money that you're spending there is going straight to those people who, who need it the most. Certainly a fascinating and complicated story. Grant Cohen is the co-founder of Chaco Travel. He joined me on the phone from Denver, an expert on Cuba travel, and really understands this one category that's left. It's called support for the Cuban people. Uh, look him up if you are interested. Well, that's going to about do it for me here on a Tuesday afternoon. It was a big day here at Bloomberg.